And we're live with Spotlight. This is Dan Papandrea. We have a special show today. We're talking Thanos, his highly available Prometheus setup. It's an incubator project from the CNCF. Long-term storage capabilities with Bartek Biotka. Okay, and Spotlight starts now. All righty, Bartek. Welcome to uh, Spotlight Live. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. It was a long day. So before we get started, I'm going to do some housekeeping. Is that okay? You know? Sure. Awesome. So uh, we are. This is the CNCF disclaimer. This is an official live stream of the CNCF, and as such, is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not do anything in the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. Please be respectful of one another. Another subject that's very close to our hearts, Bartek, is KubeCon. KubeCon North America. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, folks. Uh, registration for KubeCon and Cloud Native Con North America 2021 is now open for in-person and virtual. Explore all the registration options. Go ahead and, uh, you know, there's a link. You'll probably put the link up. Hold down one second. And boom. There you go. I'll leave that up for a little bit. So, Bartek, we're talking Thanos today. I want, I want to ask you a, a, a serious, serious question. First question. And I know, look, I put your face on the guy. Is there inspiration from Thanos or it's just you You all just went back to like Greek Greek times, like Greek gods times. Like I want to understand this whole Thanos name. Where did it come from? Nice, nice. Good question. Uh, and I think there was a time in the very beginning of, of this project where we were afraid to tell the truth. Um, I talked to my manager. We were trying to make some, you know, Marvel jokes, right? And my manager was that, from legal perspective, do not poke the beer. Do not poke the beer. <laughs> I was like, all right, okay, let's, uh, let's, we had like amazing, you know, jokes and whatever. So at the end, we didn't joke too much. We were silent, but actually when we, uh, you know, proposed donate the project to the CNCF, they made a proper for, you know, copyright trademark checks. And apparently there is no trademark on that Thanos. Um, so we can joke around just fine. And uh, so I can tell you the truth. And the truth is that our, um, you know, and my past um, job at the startup, it was called Improbable, amazing startup around, you know, games and distributed systems. And we were part of the infrastructure team. We were looking for some monitoring um, metric kind of solution that will will solve our needs. And we were- Can we talk computers. about Improbable real quick? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but let me ask this sure. question. Sure, but maybe, uh, yeah, maybe let me finish the naming and then I can talk okay. about Improbable. All right, all right, go ahead. Um, at the end, I want to just quickly go into the, um, topic why we even named Thanos. And the reason is that we were having like Kubernetes, microservices, and each of those services used to have some name, right? We we have like a Scarlet, Iron Man, Aquaman, and like Thor, and like all of, and, and those we are trying to find a meaning, right? So every time you create a new microservice, you were responsible to find a correct name, right? And we were, we were kind of playing around different names and that's why it came uh, with Thanos. And I think it, to be honest, it might find, you know, it might be kind of feel silly, but actually I think it contributed to some popularity, right? So anyway, let me yeah. let me ask about Improbable though. What was the major game that Improbable? Was there a game that like there was the was the studio that like what what was the major game from Improbable? Sure. So now we we used to have like a minor, um, I mean, many contracts with like smaller indie games, and they were actually pretty playable. And the kind of idea behind the the whole game studio, or like it's not a game studio by the way. Improbable is like just a platform that allows to game studio to actually develop games easier, right? And actually it is still ongoing. And the the, the newest game, the scavenger, uh, you can kind of Google it around. It's actually a, uh, I think it's a, a beta, so you can actually either buy or even try it. So the whole general idea is that you make a game in a very easy way, but actually you distribute this, um, you kind of write a game like it will be on one computer for one user and actually you know, upload to our cloud and it will just distribute into many machines and run a persistent game with like capabilities of like, you know, sc scaling to millions of players. So we have used to have a game called the World Adrift, 
which was actually a pretty fun game, um, where where there was like ships and you could like build those ships and, and fl they were flying around the islands. At the end, if the ship was broken, the one piece of the ship that you could just harvest, uh, you know, fell down in some island. In one year, you will play this game. In one year of real, you know, lifetime, you will go to this place. If no one touched this part, it will be still there. That's what persistent really means, right? So the idea was cool, but very ambitious. Let me let me ask you just like now you ask me like I have two questions at this point like are you a comics fan like or was that forced upon you like were you like oh Thanos I'm pretty that's awesome Scarlet Witch amazing or were you like oh dorky I'm not into that. <laughs> yeah you kind of were you had to like it I guess or <laughs> you were with us yeah no I like I like I don't like I mean I'm I I would love to have time for comics but. Um, I really like the movies and like this this kind of uh, you know also Star Wars also other stuff so I guess typical typical person but yeah you have to have some passion towards that right got it so so let me let's ask this I mean for the uninitiated somebody in this community right now or an end user that's looking at us like okay what is Thanos what does it what what does it do what is it sure so Thanos is a monitoring system at the end what it does it uh, you know allows you to collect metrics. Which is, which is a certain uh, observability signal, uh, among others. So one way of observing your, uh, your software, how, what is the state of your software? What, if the, what is the healthness? Maybe you want to trigger some, um, you know, some notification if something goes wrong and how to define those things. All of this is part of the monitoring system. So we allow to, to kind of collect those metrics and uh, store them. So it's at the end, it's a distributed database, you can call it. And, uh, you know, obviously as a database, you can access this data and you can, uh, you know, run some, um, I don't know, alerting rules, recording rules and, and really store it efficiently. So the goal of Thanos was to really do what Prometheus is doing, but just on scale and then uh, cheap and then continue the same amazing functionality through like a very stable PromQL language with like a language of querying those data, which is really, really, uh, loved by many, many thinking, many people in the community. Um, so what we did in in the you know uh, in the essence, what we did with Thanos, we kind of took the Prometheus, we split into pieces and put into microservices, right? And we have similar functionality, just scaled, and and this is what makes it powerful, right? And also highly available, and so on. Um, one additional thing that we were uh, we added on top of let's say this setup is. You know, we had the goal to make sure this is cheap long term. So, you know, at, when, at the end, when you collect lots of metrics, you are having lots of data, right? So you need to have like a cheap storage. And we thought that object storage, which will, which is available on every possible cloud provider, and it's super cheap to store data there. Um, we believe that you know it, it is actually amazing, uh, you know, place where you can store all of this data. Especially because you don't really use all of metrics, to be honest. Like you, you want to cover them all, but actually you use them, you know, rarely. Um, so for those cases, it is actually very efficient to use and very cheap, right? One of the a couple of things I was looking at the website, and, and I know of you all because of you know my what I work on, right? And so in terms of like unlimited retention, that's what we were talking about the cheap aspect that you can throw this in an S three bucket. The global qu query thing from PromQL was genius. All right, it's the the way that you all interact so directly with PromQL. It's it's phenomenal because I can literally write one prom, PromQL query and query all of these things versus one disparate exporter and all of these different nodes, which to me is pretty goddamn awesome. Like that to me is the big draw of this. And so, like, talk to me about like again is what was the problem, the original problem you were trying to solve. With honest, like, like it's not like, hey, you know, we just want to make this distributed thing. It's like, oh, uh, like, what was the problem you wanted to solve here? That's a very good question, right? Like, especially just doing something distributed for fun is is the the biggest anti pattern ever. You should avoid doing this. Like, it's a complexity. It 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 is actually complex. Any distributed system can have complex situations, right? Um, and the, to be honest, yeah, global view was the main main goal here, and. I think the the fortunate situation or like unfortunate that triggered this project was that at improbable to accommodate those different game studios and maybe uh, players on different continents and different locations, we were running like 30 Kubernetes clusters in the very beginning of Kubernetes, to be honest, like we were running Kubernetes ourselves. And 
um, you know, that was a problem at the end for a metric system because like Prometheus that was supposed to be localized is that you we suddenly have 30 clusters. So you need to have a global view, bird eye view, whatever you call it, to gather all those information. And, and we really wanted to aggregate. So some application, some game could flow between clusters and get migrated. And all of this is part of the same application. So I would love to have informations and aggregations, you know, no matter where it is. Right. So, and to be honest, it was like four, year, five years ago, almost not almost like literally five years ago when I joined Improbable and we we had those problems. This is this was like very beginning of you know the whole world starting to noticing those problems, right? Because when when I am now kind of architect in in Red Hat for um, for observability things then the main problem right now are, and not only observability problems, but anything else, hey, we suddenly have multiple clusters. We treat uh, clusters as a, as a cattle, not as a pet, which means that we kind of create them and, and destroy them in a second, right? So this was never a problem before. Um, and now everyone is moving in this direction. So those federated solutions are must have. Um, and this is why, you know, tunnels were, were burned in the, in, burned in a, or like burnt, like born in a uh, in the correct moment, right? And because we maybe were were having those issues uh, prematurely prematurely than 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 other uh, companies, right? That's incredible. And again, it's like you were definitely the early adoption aspect, and then being able to like take that and then you know something you gave to the masses. Let's let's talk about that for a sec. When did you decide? Hey, you know what? Let's take this thing and open and probable like you all open sourced it pretty much. Was that an early decision? Were you like, let's do this? Like, who 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 helped with that? Oh yeah, that's that's extremely good question because having an open source project and like doing open source things for, especially a startup, a very focused startup with minimal amount of engineers, has, has is like a, a huge investment. And to be honest, it would not happen if not um, somehow Prometheus community, let's say, because how the project started is that we have this problem of like, Hey, uh, we need federated monitoring system and we want to have uh, long-term storage and cheap operational cost and high availability. And we already used Prometheus. So that's great system that we just want to build upon. And, um, we tried different things. And at the end it was Fabian Reynards, uh, like amazing engineer now working at, at Google. He had this idea that maybe we can use object storage and we can use exactly the same format as Prometheus. I don't know how it looks like, but I feel this will work. Who wants to pay for this work? And Impro was like, yeah, let's meet. We, we kind of met in the KubeCon at some point, 2016 or 17. And uh, yeah, we just started collaboration. So he kind of stopped his work at CoreOS and for three months got contracted by Improbable. And I was kind of the engineer working on observability. So I kind of joined this effort and his uh, main kind of, uh, because he was part of Prometheus team, his main uh, criteria for even you know joining this collaboration was, hey, this has to be open source from scratch. So to be honest, Improbable was, uh, was not even thinking twice because um, it was very, I mean, well, maybe they, they were thinking th about this, but what I mean is that they, it was not like a huge conversation um, because there was, a, you know, a someone willing to do it, someone capable of doing and some 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 good idea. And uh, he, his requirements was to to have it open source. And there was uh, there was no strong feelings to 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 make it known, right? But like um, that that why it was. I'm super grateful that Improbable like you know accepted that um, offer for and and kind of we we collaborated, we designed everything, and in three months we shipped this. To be honest, uh, like in a in a obviously like basic form. Uh, but um, <laughs> the truth is, like he left uh, like this contractor thing went to google and uh, for political well for legal reasons he could he couldn't even uh, contribute again to to thanos so um i was kind of continuing this work and really this is where the true um you know investment from Op improbable actually um you know appear right this because this is the moment where you need ongoing um uh, do ongoing investment on community, getting more people involved, and and just paying this engineer to kind of look on those uh, you know contributions and and really open source factors, and this is where Improbable were were kind of doing some of it, and uh, I mean super grateful, and this is why this is super successful. But at the end, um, I had to sacrifice a lot of free time too. You know, that's the we nobody talks a lot about about that 
like in terms of like open source, like, you know, like it ends up, there's the superstars and the core maintainers of certain projects. You know, I, we, I work on Falco. Right. And so like, there's, there's parts of this where it's literally like, you know, there's core maintainers like Lorenzo and Leo and folks on my side that are just, you know, killing and doing so much work and stuff like that. But then there's, we have to kind of take that step back and let others kind of come in and let them contribute. Talk to me a little bit about that, like where you were like, look, I've done all this thing and now I'm like nurturing other talent to bring, take the mantle and take finals forward. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. It's all about- now, I'm nailing it today, Bartek. I'm nailing it. We're doing it together. Let's do it. Let's all, go. All, all the points are good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me think about that. So I think, you know, first of all, it was the, definitely very important to start like building community. So I know I spent many, many, I don't know, hours to just talk to different people and collaborate uh, and, and really establish some kind of process that will just gather more people, gather more community because looks like uh, the, the project got some, um, you know, movement, people started to use it, adopt it, but, you know, it's hard to motivate anyone from those companies to actually even mention they are using it. That was really a blocker for, for some people. Um, so... I knew that internally, you know, you know, huge projects are huge companies are using Thanos, but I couldn't even speak about that because legally, whatever. So, at the end, it was very uh, hard work to and like maybe you know a little bit of um, um, strategy, you know, tactical thinking and maybe some uh, discussions around how to get those people, those companies to contribute or even share that they are using or share some feedback. That was the first step. The second step was to actually. Uh, have and, and start really a secure environment for people to speak up. And I was really, again, I was like, you know, true open source developer, asynchronous work, no Slack, no chat. Like This is like not efficient. I don't want to do it. And at some point I was like, okay, whatever, let's create the Slack channel. And actually that was, that was actually the stepping, the, the trigger for actual contributor because there are so many people who are afraid to ask maybe silly question in GitHub issue because for them GitHub issue is like, wow, huge proposal. No, it's not for us. It would be fine if they would just ask this uh, question, but they were just looking for this easy, uh, you know, small step where which was just Slack and and just, hey, create, uh, just just say something. And then with, with this momentum, uh, people started to help each other and this was a trigger for actual community. And I, I cannot say this, uh, you know, enough. Just start this damn chat. Like you, you have to have it. Like there's no you. You might not like it. You might like IRC. Who, by the way, no one use IRC this time around. So you need to have a Slack, right? There's no other way. And um, or whatever is the most popular kind of chatting platform. But in the in the end, um, that was a major um, goal. And of course, a major sorry step. And of course, um, you know, trying to get maintainers. So having contributor is one thing, but then how to get that step. And there is this balance be between, hey, I want to have some bar of the maintainer. They has to know about, you know, this stuff. They have to be friendly. There is so much, it's like an, uh, it's like a hard interview to pass, except that you don't have money after that, right? So it's really um, challenging, but, uh, you just need to show value. I think mentoring help as well. We have lots of maintainers uh, based on the mentorship we do. Um, and literally all of our men men mentees have like a nice job. So, so we, I'm, I'm super happy with that, with the effect of it. So, you know, mentorships, um, community and, and kind of having a safe space so people can see the value. Like they see, oh, I will now maintain. Oh, now many companies want to hire me because I have this, have this skill. And that was the trigger of you know, oh, this is actually valuable to be like a maintainer. And sometimes we, what I recommend is that, you know, it's rarely the case that a person have a, is familiar with the whole code base, try to figure out like one portion. Okay, you are a maintainer for this particular, you know, part. So at least you help on this, on this position, like front end, for example. And um, you don't need to, you know, know about like everything else, but you at least meet like those criteria. And we have the occasion when, you know, we join, uh, well, we, we get someone as a maintainer and he immediately got a job, right? Like uh, in SRE space, because, you know, he know he knew uh, that he was part of the tunnels. So uh, someone, someone, someone told me once, uh, because there was some interview um, of someone and then, 
in some company and, and he didn't have a lot of even questions. He just said, I'm Thanos contributor or something and, uh, or like maintainer. And someone said from this interview or this company said, we don't need to check you that much. You maintain Thanos. We know you cannot be a moron. <laughs> so I mean that's a good that's a good actually value eh? as a maintainer I guess so so this is those are some motivation points where you can bring right if there's projects and again so you know Thanos is an incubated project the Falco is an incubated project there's projects anybody's watching this I think exactly what he said it's like you know having that um, being able to ask those questions showing grat gratitude I think is the biggest thing is like hey thank you for doing that thank you for putting this in here we you know we send we have a contributor of the month is what we do and and basically we send some swag out to them and we say thank you so much it because you know people are taking time out of their day this isn't their day job their day job isn't maintaining Thanos Thanos or Falco or cube it's not none of that and that's the part I think that you know any any burgeoning projects in the sandbox, you're watching this i'm sure you know bart what would agree with me show show gratitude to the people that are taking time out of their day totally i want to add to this point because uh we had for some time and there it was like a contributor idea to every friday just do a shout out and like shout out on twitter and on slack and literally traverse through all the week slack and get all the people who contributed and like name it name them and just say thank you and like it works so well we actually have an issue even open to create a bot for this but probably bot will be not that rewarding but but still if in, i think there is enormous help that people do and and it allowed me to for example focus on delegating and and teaching and and all of the stuff and i don't need to be constantly on the main tunnels uh, user channel because people are helping each other so it's enormous right and there was help i'm writing i'm writing this down Okay, sure. Yeah, like, yeah, let's one. create a bot together. <laughs> I mean, again, so yeah, bots would be nice still. Uh, some kind of uh, kudos bot, whatever, right? Yeah, man, I like it. Carlos uh, Panado, if you're watching this, get that bot ready. Come on, got some work for you, my man. All right, so I'm going to ask you this because, you know, again, I'm in the space, you know, I work for Sysdig, you know, we have like a back in store for, for metrics and, and also like, you know, obviously runtime security stuff with Falcon and, and Sysdig Secure, but there's one thing is like, I've seen there's a lot of other projects that have very similar kind of, you know, uh, traits, right? It's kind of a, a store for metrics, right? We think of like Cortex or M3. Um, what do you think like, an, but I I'll always hear Thanos is kind of, this is the thing. This is the, you know, the, the key kind of flagship uh, store. So my question to you is what differs, what makes, what's the difference? What makes you stand out besides those other tools? Yeah, that's that's a uh, you know tough space to be in, right? Like there is there is so much demand that, by the way, there is a place for everyone. Like if every of those projects will have like a I don't know like found a company behind that, like we would still have customers enough customers, right? So that's a good thing. Like there is still a place for this for this competition. It's not like it's a very niche. Um, however, you know there are still differences. And uh, first of all, yeah, there is a demand. So there are different people having different ideas uh, about how the backend should work, right? So, um, and I think what is very unique in Thanos is that we really grown this solution from Prometheus project itself. So we use, uh, you know, native protocols. We stick to the native APIs, but even on storage, everything is the same. So you, what we do literally in Thanos is like. We combine everything into this, those TSDB, whatever, time series database uh, of Prometheus blocks, which are our directory of files. And we literally kind of put it in object storage. So if you would download that, the thing and run Prometheus on top of it, it would just work, right? It's exactly the same. And this is super powerful because we could leverage the same tooling, the same knowledge that Prometheus spent six years or seven to, to teach people about, right? So PromQL is one of the most, uh, you know, the most powerful and flexible, you know, uh, metric querying language, but it's also, it has a, a steep curve of learning, like as every, you know, SQL or whatever other languages, right? So um, since people already adopted that, it was much easier to use this, right? So that's why um, all those decisions were optimized for this, um, you know, in integrity. And also it's worth mentioning that, you know, we treat this as a family. So for example, when our students or our, you know, maintainers or contributor, they 
especially men mentees, like they want to, you know, they have a project and task to do, a feature to do on Thanos. We say, hey, contribute this to Prometheus first. Maybe we can share that. We can reuse that with, with Prometheus code. There is community. There is other people who can take a look on that. And uh, if you contribute during this time into Prometheus, we count this as a contribution to Thanos because we literally the, we are literally importing the same code. So this reusability was very important for us because we don't we, we don't you know uh, program the PromQL engine from scratch like a compaction from scratch, uh, storage um, format, reading and writing. Those are a very complex pieces of code, like like literally unreadable sometimes because it's so, so optimized, it's memory mapping, it's so so much stuff, and we directly import this code, right? And this is very unique, right? Because there are so many companies that M3DB, like amazing system, came from uh, Uber. Um, so, you, you know, Uber has to create something like, I don't know, like five years ago uh, from scratch because there was nothing there. So no one blamed them to, to have like a solid system they want to share and open source. So it's great. And actually, they are very, um, you know, happy to collaborate and, and they are adding integration points. So they are supporting PromQL, they are supporting a write protocol so we can send data from Prometheus to, to M3DB, not only to Thanos. And the same with Cortex. Cortex is special because it kind of grown from the Prometheus maintainers, just different Prometheus maintainers. And it was actually created one year before Thanos. And, you know, we would love to use it. And it, we tried in Timberwall to use it and it didn't work. But I'm, I'm, we are, we are. I think it's okay to say that because you know it was the very beginning of this project as well, and we used to have different paradigms as well, different uh, thinking. We said, hey, we want object storage support. We want to have the same storage support. We didn't want to have push replication. There's some technical things that we want to try out, and and in practice, what we see is that our teams collaborate very much. Like we have. Uh, you know, Cortex maintainer, Marco, as Thanos maintainer, for example. I was contributing to Cortex many times. I know its code base because they actually import Thanos code and we import their code. And like, we, this is great collaboration that end up with like massive go. Let, like, let me ask this. I'm going to ask this. Point, I, I, I want to ask you a question. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. Why have multiple projects? If you know what I mean? Like, it's because, and I understand this, and you know, this is a controversial thing. I'm going to ask, like, but like, why have a Cortex and why have a Prometheus? Why have an M3 or excuse me, a, a, a Thanos when you can kind of integ integrate these if everybody's working on them? Because then it, it almost confuses the end user. But I, is it because of, like you said, it's it's the context each one is is providing. It's Each one has a different thing that it's doing to a certain degree. At the end, they are doing similar thing. There are minor feature differences, but at the end, especially Cortex and and Thanos, we really maintain the same APIs and stuff. And nowadays, we have the same storage uh, with some differences. And uh, so this is a very good question. But I will I will ask you, you know, would you like to, you know, your focus project like Cortex or Thanos, and would you like to suddenly adopt, you know, 100,000 lines of tech debt? Right, and and for yeah. for for Cortex team, it will be tech depth to have Thanos kind of components and code. For Thanos, it would be you know Cortex code. So, at the end, um, this is a significant work, and uh, to to merge those things, and we we kind of you know talk about it many many times. But I want to show the advantage of all, all of this. Like we learn from each other so much, right? We and I was talking about many times is that we. We, we collaborate, I know what they are working on, they, are, they know what we work on. And, you know, for example, it allowed Cortex to totally not don't uh, work on downsampling, right? Because they, hey, hey, we, Thanos have it, and we will kind of integrate that if, if, if it will be needed, so they can experiment on that, right? We are not doing any shuffle sharding like they, the Cortex are, is doing, and, and maybe um, they kind of chosen a different direction of um, compaction. I don't want to go to low-level low details, but essentially they are using small blocks, we are doing large blocks, and you know those are different trade-offs. So being able to simultaneously kind of experiment with those two paths in the same time, it, it's, it was actually enormous, enormous uh, you know, a value for, for all of that. So we make different decisions because our teams have a different culture. We are diverse. 
So it actually, you know, because we treat each other friendly and we kind of reuse each other code if it's useful, this is super, super massive, uh, massive help so far, right? Nowadays, nowadays I see uh, Cortex maintainers very, very, very busy, right? Like um, they got this Amazon kind of user and I don't think they kind of contribute back. So Cortex maintainers are trying to hide things. So there are some interesting stuff going on and I think it's it's worth to see that as a, as a lesson as well, how, how that really evolves. Um, but so far it's, it's a super useful project and, and uh, yeah, uh, just check it out. What what do you do you uh, do you need from the user perspective? All right. No worries. Yeah, it makes complete sense. So I'm gonna ask a question about just a lake somebody, and this is probably something you should probably go on uh, Raw Codes LGTM. But how does somebody contribute and uh, get involved in, in Thanos at some point? Shameless plug. I shouldn't be plugging that guy. We're mortal enemies. But go ahead. You're competitors, right? We're not competitors. I've won. That's it. So anyway, moving on. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So. It's actually very easy. Just go to the Thanos IO and click the community button, and you should have beautiful documentation. What steps you could you could do to maybe pick your first issue, or maybe you are uh, you want to give a, a, a nice feedback, or maybe you want to help us to create tutorial, or maybe you want to share your case study or blog post or or um, any talk that you made around Thanos and our project and what we do. And maybe you want to be a mentee. I we are doing heavily. We are heavily investing in mentorship, and we are doing those sessions every. I mean, three times a year. And um, like this year, we have like four mentees, and now we have another four. So it's kind of madness. And but like it's super useful for everyone, I think. So what you can do, just just really apply for those programs because, by the way, those are not for students. Like you might be very. A skilled smart engineer who is like in like some closed source company which uh, you know doesn't uh, give you lots of opportunity to to be part of the community and you want to just try to join open source effort and maybe i don't know, switch a little bit uh, the focus we would like to show you the value we have so many uh, like senior engineers um, for example jessica on the prometheus um, mentorship program like we, we we she was working full time and still participating as as a mentee and it was super useful for her to learn how to how how open source looks like right so this is another way how you can involve get involved in the community so yeah just go to this website find yourself the documentation and um, just ask questions on the slack channel yeah if you have any Fantastic. You and again, no rest for the wicked here. You 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 you're so busy, man. And like, I, I, by the way, I want to tell you, I appreciate you coming on here. Uh, you know, I know you've been super super busy. Um, let's talk about this. You're writing a dude. What don't you do? You're writing a damn book. Tell me yeah, about that. Do. Yeah, why not? Right. Um, I think yeah, exactly. The question is why not? Like, I think uh, you know, people still learn a lot from books, like technical books. I, I love reading them and especially if it's about like generic programming, whatever, or like maybe technology that doesn't really get obsolete that quick, it's it's worth reading. Um, but no one really write books. Like we have only those fancy people who are doing streams, right, Bob? <laughs> and uh, what? Wait, hold on. What? Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I, so I'm I personally attacked on that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Like I think I think it's just uh you know, more rewarding to do a video, more consumable for users. So I, I really understand this effort, but I think it's not many people write book, right? And and it's not sexy anymore. And I talked, I really wanted to find a co-author co and I really found, uh, I mean, Frederick is helping me, Frederick Branchik, who is now- um, Shout out, yeah. shout out. To yeah. Low Pol Polar Winds, Core OS guy. Shout out. Amazing dude. person, Much yeah. Love. He's been so supportive. Of just everybody, he's just a wonderful person, dude. Shout out to you, Frederick. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anyone who doesn't like Frederick. I don't think anyone such like that exists. So Frederick's an amazing person, and he agreed to write one chapter with me. So that's that's amazing about profiling, by the way, um, because he's creating this. Uh, uh, you know, he's the CEO of the Polar Signals, a company cool. behind profiling, continuous profiling and stuff. So anyway, um, and you know, I was trying to find a co-author and it was so hard to, because everyone was calculating money. And I was like, oh, this will take me 500 hours of my, you know, um, 
and this means this money and oh i don't see this happening right so i really if you do it usually you really do it for uh for just maybe values of of teaching others and uh yeah other stuff so to be honest my other motivation i want to share is that there was into at import maybe people from me probably will laugh but there was this kind of spreadsheet I mean, probably is like uh, many of us are having this in companies where um we want to share who is good at what thing and there was a spreadsheet with like a scale from zero to ten uh, where zero is like i have no idea what this technology is about and 10 is i wrote a damn book about it so i want to be 10. Right? i was always like eight and uh, like in golang whatever i was and, and i write book about golang and performance um i didn't share the title i don't i didn't even share really publicly what it is about so i, I slowly started start to talk about that but i really really um would wanted to try this out well do it. best of luck and i'll probably end up having you on the podcast and we can talk about it live when when, when it's about to launch i'll probably buy like 10 copies and give them away see that's just just that's that's the thing i do man Anyway, so I guess a question from my man, Naren. Uh, thanks for being on the, uh, for joining the uh, stream, but can newcomers to Kate's utilize Thanos or is it focus on the enterprise use case? Yeah, good question. Actually, I would say it's mainly for Kubernetes customers uh, because, well, it's in the CNCF kind of ecosystem. So it's kind of Kubernetes is the, our main uh, targeted orchestration system. Of course, we make it sure it's like a containerized so you can run it everywhere. But we have some special discovery mechanism and things that makes it much easier to work on Kubernetes. And uh, it is actually used a lot in the smaller companies. And I've seen this. Uh, and, and I, I will tell you why. The reason is that it's it has a very flexible deployment model. So you can install, you have your Prometheus stack. Usually they start, like if you want to start with observability and metrics, just run Prometheus. It's a single binary, just learn how to do that first. Then you can you know gradually install stuff. You can install just a sidecar and a querier, and suddenly you have a global view because you can connect many of those Prometheuses under the same and a PromQL engine. And then if that feels all right to you and you say, oh, well, deploying is kind of nice, but I want to add a object storage support and like a cheap storage. So then you install additional two microservices. And then if you say, oh, now I'm a, a, a super user and I want like multi-tenant and like amazing scalability, then I can think about maybe receiver and maybe remote write replication. And, and there is like lots of steps you can do. You can mix all of this. So it's very actually welcoming for just experimentation different parts and and not implementing everything and getting you know migrating and like all those big step we are iterating right trying to have this process of iteration all righty let me ask you this i mean just kind of the last question i, ha I have for you but what's what's next for for thanos and what's next for let's let's let me i'm gonna break it into two questions what's next for bartek and what's next for Fa thanos Oh man, uh, I think it's really something related to what you said that you know it's it's very important to delegate at some point, right? The work, and I think I I we built like amazing team right now in Thanos where I can go to vacations finally, right? <laughs> and and you know I can focus on on maybe some uh, more advanced stuff and maybe. Uh, you know, I'm active in the seek or like tag observability now uh, as a tech lead. I'm writing book and I'm doing lots of uh, stuff around observability for different signals. I yeah, I have passion to to kind of improve this uh, step and make use of pool based kind of um, observability collection mechanism better and so on. So that's the future for me. I would say I would love to explore those things while making sure tunnels can integrate into that uh, well. For example, we created a new project called Observatorium. I can plug that, right? And observatorium.io, just literally go there. And uh, you can see this is like a platform which allows you to deploy Thanos with other observability signals. Because at the end, you want metrics, sure. But you know there are other cool stuff, like logging. Everyone logs. Everyone do at some point some tracing and continuous profiling and to be honest you can totally um you know combine all of this and we are making sure as a Thanos we integrate with other signals making sure the correlation story makes sense so you can jump from the metric you can say you can have an alert and you know you have some you know amount of errors for some service you are on call 
and there is incidents and then you know but what 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 are the errors like what's going on you you click the exemplar which is kind of the way to link into the tracing example situation that happen in your actual you know container in actual binary thanks of the tracing and and this exemplars kind of support uh, and then you jump into trace and see exactly who and what error happened and, and in, in what kind of circumstances so those correlation capabilities is when you have like a consistent model of uh, you know configuring different systems so that's why observatory was was created and and we know it, it takes some time to integrate thanos with those other systems making sure for example exemplars are supported and they are uh, in some way but we want to kind of extend this uh, so all of this is kind of grown out of Thanos, and this is really also, you know, best practice is grown, right? We are starting Thanos, uh, I mean, CNCF me meetups, uh, like literally today we have the first one, so Mentis meetups. How, what we mean, CNCF Mentis meetup, what we mean is that it's a series of meetups where uh, we want to make sure mentees have like a way to uh, practice public speaking, but also learn the, I mean, teach them about the learnings they get and we get from the mentoring as well. So we want other CNCF projects to also participate in this group. And I had a link somewhere, but I don't have it right now. So maybe later I can send it. But at the end, um, we are doing those things. Uh, you know, I mean, there are so many good best practices that came out of Thanos, like uh, including book, right? This is why I write this book because like not many people know how to optimize Go, right? So this is another stuff that I want to focus on. So this is for me and in some way for Thanos, right? To make sure it works with other observability signals. It is just even more scalable and uh, secure, right? So all of those productionized topics really, productionized topics well you snapped your finger you changed the universe you made thanos you did some great stuff today we talked about a bunch of things pardon me for a second i'm going to speak some polish to my friend bartek right now dziękuję bardzo Sulham, dwa people me and you scoop con good no uh, let's do it right. that's it yeah all right all right. Thank you so much, Bartek, for being on the spotlight. Um, I'm going to do some housekeeping and uh, I'll uh, basically go, here we are, everyone. So next week on Monday, we have Duffy Cooley. He's the This Week in Cloud Native. Um, we're going to be talking also uh, Tim. Uh, Tim Banks is on Solid State. And then we have Cloud, Cloud Native Latinx. Bunch of shows next week. A lot of fun, you all. Thank you so much. Remember to follow. Please make sure to follow the the um, Cloud Native here, the Twitch channel. We really enjoy it, and we really, really appreciate you all being being here and enjoying the shows we're putting together. A lot more coming, everyone. It's going to be really cool. And remember, everyone uh, in the community, the spotlight is always on you.